passing Luchers. For a time, your journey will take you around the edge of two very different landscapes. The fertile rolling fields contrast with the dark forests rooted in sands which have been deposited over thousands of years by the sea. And then, suddenly, you'll be crossing that sea, over the Tay, heading for Dundee. Here at Luchers, you're actually quite close to the sea, but a vast expanse of sand and rolling dunes lies between the railway line and the waves. Tom Cunningham has worked here for a number of years, managing the National Nature Reserve. The view from the train, when you look over the Tay, you'll see the green, the dark green area of the forest. In front of that is Tayport Heath, which is an important part of the reserve. And if you look further east, you'll see a long finger of sand dune going further and further out to sea. This is the the, the growth area of the the sand dune that we could put a timeline on that because in front of the the tank traps that were laid down in 1940 as part of the coastal sea defence system, the reserve has grown about 700 metres in 80 years. The important plants are the um, pioneering plants, uh, including marum grass, sea lime grass, creeping willow, and of course the lichens and the mosses and the heather amongst the heath, and that's developing, and then they're enlarging year on year. If you walk here in summer, you'll see a dazzling array of wild flowers, including yellow bird's foot trefoil, purple and pinky white orchids, and the wonderfully named creeping ladies' tresses. It's a haven for hundreds of different moths and as many as 18 species of butterfly. Grey and harbour seals haul out onto the sandbars of the intertidal zone, while in the autumn the waders and geese start to fly in. This gem of Scotland's natural heritage might be well hidden, but local people know it well. Tentsmuir is a popular national nature reserve, attracting visitors from Fife and from urban Dundee just across the Tay. As your train today carries you slowly over the long, low bridge that gracefully curves into Dundee, it's hard to imagine the terrible events which took place here on a stormy night in late December 1879. There was an earlier bridge here, built in the 1870s, more than a decade before the construction of the fourth rail bridge. Although both were made of cast iron, the fourth crossing is of a much sturdier, bulkier design. The original Tay crossing, a simple design of girders supported on a series of iron columns, would prove to be completely inadequate. Eighteen months after the opening of the Tay rail bridge, a violent storm hit the sea. Strong winds were too great, the cast iron columns failed and the girders carrying the line came away from the supports. Just at that moment, a train was making its way across the bridge towards Dundee. It plunged into the icy waters below, killing all 75 people on board. An inquiry found flaws in the design, manufacture and construction of the bridge. The civil engineer responsible, Sir Thomas Bouch, had once had a high reputation which was now ruined. He died within a year of the tragedy, but within ten years another bridge had opened, this time constructed of concrete, iron and steel. It's this bridge which carries your train safely to Dundee today.